So the second equation we are going to look at is another limiting case. So that's actually limiting case number two. A elliptic equation. So that is the case where u is equal to zero and the t goes to infinity. We have just said that when u is equal to zero, we get the heat equation if we have an f equal to zero. And as t goes to infinity on, uh, on that heat equation, we recover a constant, right? So that is in the case where we don't have a right-hand side f. If we do have a right-hand side f, the equation becomes kappa times partial square u u partial x square plus f is equal to zero. And we can in general study the case where kappa equal to one because if kappa is not equal to one, as long as it is non-zero, we can divide the whole equation by kappa and we replace f with f divided by kappa and we get the same thing. So let's remove this kappa from this equation and study that. This equation is called the Poisson's equation. And the solution to that equation can also be analyzed using Fourier series. So in this case, we only have x, we don't have t. And strictly speaking, this is an OD, we should have first we, ha we should have d's instead of partials. But most of the time when we talk about Poisson's equation, we are discussing multiple dimensions in space. So let me write this as a partial, even in the uh, one dimension space case. We are going to expand u of x using Fourier series again, k equal to minus infinity to infinity, u hat of k, u to the i, kx. And the second derivative is going to become minus k is equal to uh, minus infinity to infinity k squared times u hat of k times e to the i k x. Okay, I'm also going to expand f, which can be a function of time, using Fourier series. We have f hat of k instead of u hat of k for the coefficients of f. Now, matching the two sides of the equation, both using Fourier expansion, we have, if we plus that equal to zero, what we have is k square of u hat of k has to equal to f hat of k. Okay, so what does that mean? What does this equation mean? For k equal to zero, for k equal to a small number, small can include negative or positive, for small absolute value k, and for a large absolute value k. For k equal to zero, we can see that f hat of k has to be zero. Otherwise, we don't have a solution. That's because the domain is periodic. And as we take t to infinity for the, for the heat equation case, the f is like a heat source. It's like a source of thermal energy uh, that pumps into the domain. So if you have a non-zero average or a non-zero integral in the amount of heat you pump into the system, then the temperature is going to keep increasing to infinity or keep decreasing to minus infinity. You don't have a steady state solution which is what this equation is describing, a steady state solution. You would only have a steady state solution if f hat of zero is equal to zero. So that's the first thing this equation tell me. Okay, and then it also tells me that f hat, for the other case, it can be arbitrary value. 
and then I can have a solution u hat of k is equal to f hat of k divided by k square. Right. So it takes the Fourier components of f and divide it by k square. Divided by small number for small k by a big number for big k. This is almost a filtering in space, a low pass filtering in space. Because it takes the very high weight numbers, takes the very oscillatory, oscillatory components of f and decrease that by a large factor while taking the smoother components of f and decrease that only by a smaller factor. So this is uh, uh, some variation of this, this equation. It has been used in numerical methods to serve as a filter, a low-pass filter. And this is called a differential filter because it uses a differential operator to achieve the effect of removing the high-frequency components while preserving the low-frequency components. All right. So that's uh, the effect of the second limiting case of time goes to infinity while the u is equal to zero. Question? Um, what's the condition that you wrote next to the bracket when equals zero? Oh, I'm saying these two terms added together has to be equal to zero. Okay. Yeah. That's substituting these into the differential equation, into the Poisson's equation. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Thanks for clarifying. Yeah? Why is there only a steady state solution if f0 is equal to zero? Why is there only a steady state solution when f0 is equal to zero? Uh, this, is this is because if f0 is not equal to zero. OK. So for example, if f is equal to 1 as a constant, that means f0 is equal to 1 and all the other f hats are equal to 0. If you actually add uh, the time derivative term, so, so let's, let's actually analyze uh, the other case. OK, so if you write down a partial derivative of t is equal to kappa partial square u partial x squared plus f and let's say u not u of x t equal to 0 is equal to uh, it's equal to any let's say is equal to 0 and f of x is equal to a constant 1 okay what is the solution going to be can you just look at the initial condition, the right-hand side and the equation, and guess what the solution should be. Linear growth. Linear growth. I would have u of x and t equal to t, right? That solution is always a constant of in space, so the second order derivative in space goes to 0, and the time derivative is always equal to 1, which matches the right-hand side. So I would have linear growth. Okay, and by the principle of linear superposition, if you have any initial condition and any f, as long as the f not term is not equal to zero, you can express the solution as a linear combination of a solution that, that has f equal to zero and another solution that is equal to this. So that solution with f0 is equal to 0 is going to stay bounded, and this solution grows to infinity. So when you perform linear superposition of these two solutions, you're going to get a solution that goes to infinity. So there doesn't exist a steady state solution. Yes? Uh, could you expose the previous slide? Uh, this might be a very long question, but the space that counter line. Isn't that one fully mistaking that f not to be zero? Because if we put t equals zero, we have zero equals f zero. Yes. Isn't that just that? Yes. 
that's a mathematical way of answering the question why f hat of zero has to be zero. And the physical way to answer the question is what I was okay, okay. describing uh, later. Yeah. Any other questions? So in this case, f is only an explicit function of x rather than some function of u. Oh, yes. In this case, f is a function of x only. It's not a function of u. Yeah, that's right. And if f is a function of u, then especially if f is a nonlinear function of u, then we get into the field of nonlinear differential equations that cannot be analyzed using Fourier series. Yeah. All right, any other questions? And that's a great case for solving the equation numerically.